Go in and zoom in right there, that one right there, if we can make it bigger. Okay, 2024 strategy to have Newsom replace Biden. Okay, step number one. Have Newsom go around defending Biden, selling Biden's record. Shows loyalty. Step number two. Have him constantly attack DeSantis. Dems are convinced Trump will be forced to drop out. Step number three. If Biden doesn't step down, have mainstream media attack him. It's already happening. ABC, CBS, NBC all went after him starting this week. Step number four. Once Jill, Jill Biden, notices these endless attacks, have a private meeting with Biden, sharing strategy to save face if he steps down. Step number one, multiple documentaries showing him as a modern-day FDR. Number two, massive Simon & Schuster book deal. Three, defend his legacy and be pardoned by Newsom if shit hits the fan. Next one, choose one of few options to step down. Number one, due to help. Number two, Jill and I prayed about it and decided it's time for us to go spend time with our grandkids. Number three, we fix everything Trump broke and now it's time for someone else to do it. Number four, edify Newsom as being loyal to Biden, unlike DeSantis not being loyal to Trump. So then, in order to prevent Kamala from backstabbing, let her become the first female president for a split second when Biden steps down. Hillary will lose her mind, but what's new? And number seven, divide DeSantis and Trump camp to make sure MAGA doesn't vote for DeSantis. Step number eight, that says Newsom becomes 47, but I should have said 48. And last but not least, it's very likely none of the above will happen, which is why it's called a prediction. But only the paranoid survive. So do you think, like, you know, do you think Trump's going to be there next year as a Republican candidate? Well, first of all, Only the Paranoid Survive is one of the best books I've ever read. Andy Grove. Andy Grove. He recommended it to me. And and if you want to understand what's wrong with the military (laughs) establishment, all you have to do is read what he describes in there (laughs) with IBM and all these other major major corporations. It's a brilliant book. I I try to get everybody to read it. Now, secondly, uh, first of all, I think it's brilliant. And I think that if we were living in a linear world, in other words, where one, one event follows the next logically... You're absolutely right. I don't think we'll ever get to the 2024 election. I think things are going to implode in Washington before then. I think our economic financial condition is fragile. It's going to come home to roost in ugly ways. I I will tell you, I don't know exactly how it will happen. I think we're going to end up in a situation where we find out the banks are closed for two or three weeks and nobody can get into them. You think so? I think we're going to run into something like that, yeah. I also think that the levels of violence and criminality in our cities is so high that it, it's going to spill over into other places in society. P- people that normally think they can live remote from the problem are now beginning to be touched by the problem. Then I look at this thing in Ukraine. I think Ukraine is going to lose catastrophically. It's going to be a complete collapse. And that, too, is going to have an effect here at home because people are going to say, well, wait a minute. Everybody told us Ukraine was winning. Everybody told us X, Y, and Z. I mean, sort of the the Russian hoax on steroids. All of those things are going to come together or converge in some way that's going to prevent us from reaching, you know, the status quo, oh, another election, oh, another set of campaigns, and so forth. So what you're saying to me is eminently plausible because I don't think Biden will make it through the year. I think he'll be gone. And I think everybody knows that this person, uh, Kamala Harris, lacks the ability under any circumstances to be president of the United States. When you say gone, you mean passing away because of his age or merely being incapable and finally being what, what is that? What do they call it? Twenty Fifth Amendment, or whatever it is. Shuffled off the stage. I think. I They'll think, save face, though. They'll uh, do it in a way to save face. Exactly. I th- I think That's what Patrick, you're speaking yeah, of, right? Yeah, yeah. I think what Patrick wrote is accurate. Something like that will happen. And then the the, the search begins, and Newsom is the logical candidate for them. He's presiding over California, which is their poster child for the future of America. If you want to know what the Democrats want America to become, look at California. How deeply in debt is California? What's the state of affairs in that in that country of its own? It's a catastrophe. Everyone who can leave that has any talent, ability, or understanding is leaving. Businesses are leaving. No one wants to be there. So what are you going to end up with? A very small minority of very wealthy people and millions of poor people, most of whom don't even don't even consider themselves to be Americans. So that's that's the dream world for the left, California. Yeah. I don't think we'll tolerate that. So I don't think it'll ever get that far on the national level. Now, I could be wrong, but I don't think we're that complacent. I also know that you get revolutionary change when people can't eat, when the supply chains break down and you can't deliver food, when they can't afford to buy the food, when they can't afford to buy the gasoline. These things are the catalysts for real change. And everyone's betting 
that the left in charge in Washington can keep all of this going without any interruption. Maybe they're right. I don't think so. 